everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We have x to the power x to the power square root of x equals 1 half, and we're going to be solving for x values. Well, what else could we solve for, right? There's only one variable. Anyways, so I'll, I'll be presenting a single method, but there's probably another way to do this, uh, and maybe we can briefly talk about it. But let me go ahead and present my method, and then we'll talk about another possibility. But we, we won't complete it. So here's what I'm going to do. I would like to write this square root of x as x to the power 1 half. We can do it, right? That's what it means. Obviously, in this case, x needs to be positive. We're looking for real solutions. Are there any complex solutions? That's actually a good question to ask. All right, so let's go ahead and write it one more time. x to the power, x to the power, x to the power 1 half equals 1 half. So one of the nice things about writing square root of x as x to the power 1 half is being able to use the 1 half on the right-hand side. What is that supposed to mean? Now, we do know that 1 half is equal to this, right? 1 half is equal to, let me, maybe I should write this one more time. So 1 half is equal to this. We can actually go ahead and replace this 1 half with that, because that's what 1 half is equal to, right? Make sense? Hopefully it does. So that's going to give us a crazier expression with more uh, towers or more floors. So it's going to be like x to the power, x to the power, x to the power, 1 half, but 1 half will be replaced with x to the power, x to the power, x to the power, 1 half. And that is still going to equal 1 half because we just used our original expression. Make sense? And then you can do this one more time. You can actually do this infinitely many times. And then you're going to be getting something that looks like this. Let me tell you. You're going to have an x and then to the power x, to the power x, dot, 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 so on, so forth. That'll go on forever because you keep doing it. You're going to add more towers, more towers, and you can, you can keep doing this, right? So it's kind of like substituting infinitely many times. And then you get the infinite expression. And we've done similar problems before. I'll try to find the links and share with you. Now, how do you solve these kinds of questions? Well, if we have an infinite tower, then we kind of have to think about it. This is kind of like the same way we thought about it. Remember, initially we said, okay, if this whole thing is equal to one half and it contains one half in the exponent, we can actually replace the one half with the whole thing. So this thing actually kind of contains itself infinitely many times. I hope that makes sense. In other words, if this whole thing is equal to one half, then I'm looking at the exponent and it's the same thing. So that expression is also equal to 1 half. This actually simplifies the problem a great, great deal, right? <laughs> Obviously, this is a huge improvement. Now, this gives us a much nicer expression. Obviously, you kind of have to go through the, you know, convergence process. Does it converge? When does it converge for certain values? You have to look at the function y equals x to the power 1 over x, so on and so forth. There's a lot of math that goes into it, and we talked about this before, but I want to keep it simple now and just look at this from a very non-rigorous perspective. I know some people of rigor will not like this, but hopefully they'll like it. Okay, let's take it easy. So now we get something simple. x to the power 1 half equals 1 half. Isn't that beautiful? So what you can do is multiply x to the power 1 half by itself, which is going to give you x, or just simply square both sides, and that's going to give you 1 half squared, and this means x is equal to 1 fourth. It's kind of funny when you find x, uh, it becomes smaller because uh, it's a number that is between 0 and 1. Obviously, we said that x must be positive. So in other words, you're thinking about this, like square root of a, of a number is 1 half. What is that number? And it has to be, it has to be a real number. Make sense? Okay. There's a lot of different ways to look at it. So x equals 1 fourth, like, are you serious? Is this actually going to work? So before we talked about the second approach, and we didn't call this one first method because the second one is just an idea, uh, which is incomplete, but hopefully you're going to tell me more about it if you, uh, if you can do it. That would be great. I'm kind of being lazy here. Anyways, 
Uh, I want to plug it in. What is my original equation? x to the power, x to the power, square root of x. Let's rewrite it. x to the power, x to the power, square root of x equals 1 half. I want to check 1 fourth. Is this actually going to work? One of the ways you can do this is first evaluate the exponent. What is x to the power, square root of x? Well, x is 1 fourth, so this is going to be 1 fourth to the power square root of 1 fourth, which is actually 1 half. So this is going to be 1 fourth to the power 1 half, but 1 half means the square root of 1 fourth, which is 1 half, because 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. <laughs> okay, great. A lot of 1 halves and square rooting and so on and so forth. So this exponent actually gave me 1 half. So now my next thing to check is, is this actually going to work one more time? The base is x, which is 1 fourth. So follow up from here, 1 fourth to the power of the exponent, which is 1 half. And guess what? That's going to give you the square root of 1 fourth, which is 1 half. So yes, it does work. Great. Is that the only solution? We'll take a look at it. All right. And I'll show you a graph at the end. But before we look at the graph, let's go ahead and talk about the second approach briefly. All right. I'm going to call it second approach, not method, because it is not complete. All, you can also call this as another idea. Second idea, maybe another idea sounds better. Anyways, so what is the original x to the power x to the power square root of x is equal to one half. OK, this is what I'm thinking for, for these kinds of questions. I mean, substitution should work, right? I guess let's do the following. How about replacing square root of x with something? Because that's the square root. So we want to get rid of radical. How about t? t is popular these days, right? And if square root of x is equal to t, then x becomes t squared. OK, more t. Now, t times t. So we get the following from here, t squared to the power. And I'd like to use parentheses. But notice that x to the power, x to the power of square root of x is not x to the power x to the power square root of x. They're not equal because this guy equals x to the power x square root of x. This actually rather means x to the power x to the power square root of x. So that is your exponent. And we actually used it, right, to check our work. That's what it means, even though it's not always clear. Some people find it ambiguous, but nobody cares, right? Hopefully you don't care either. So t squared, I'm going to raise it to the power. So I want to put the exponent in parentheses. And that's going to be t squared to the power t. Awesome. That's going to give me a 1 half. And at this point, I get something like this, t squared to the power. What is t squared to the power t? That should be t to the power 2t. It's like 2t or not 2t. You can kind of think about it. And 2t is a word, by the way, and that kind of goes along with tutor. Tutor is who teaches and 2t is who is being taught. Anyways, that's such a weird word. I don't think anybody uses it, but that's what it means. Anyways, so from here, here's the thing. Here's the challenge. Can I manipulate this expression and kind of put it into a to the power a format? Because if I can, then guessing the answer would be fairly easy. And you're also going to know if there's any uh, more than one solutions. Make sense? Anyways, so that is my approach. Please complete and let me know what you think. But the answer is one fourth. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick and we'll finish up. OK, we said that x is equal to one fourth exactly right here. And for that value, we're going to have y equals 1 half. Notice that our graph, if you compare this to x to the power x, it's a little different curvy. And I believe it kind of looks like this, x to the power x to the power x, because it has an inflection point. You can see it's concave down first, and then it becomes concave up. If you take the second derivative, you're going to find the answer. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.